We start with the tributes, as listed on the program, with that of the Costas Rotodoro, the Honorable Mrs. Barry Rochester, followed by the Kiwanis Club. There is a tribute also from Mr. Delroy Slowly and someone else, Dr. Darian Thomas, together. And in the middle of that, I picked up the wrong program, there is another tribute not written on the program. The person knows who they are. So please follow immediately um, Delroy Slowly and uh, Darian Thomas. Speaks. Thereafter, Abigail and Tommy Finley will follow with a remembrance. This will not be announced. Please just follow as directed on the program. I invite you to come and offer the tribute on behalf of the customer. It is my honor, 
to speak of his service as a justice of the peace in this parish. The justices of the peace in the parish of St. Elizabeth are saddened that death has extinguished his beautiful flame. Yet we rejoice because his dawn has come, his purpose is fulfilled. J. P. Neville was a respected justice of the peace with unquestionable willingness, integrity, and character. His contribution to the parish was not unnoticed as he displayed boundless dedication and a great sense of purpose to service above self. It is often said that there can never be justice without peace, and neither Neither can there be justice, peace without justice. His contribution in the fields of justice and peace was remarkable and did not go unnoticed. In our country today, there are two subjects, whether taken together or separately, present us with the greatest concerns and challenges. However, notwithstanding the difficulties, J.P. Neville was undaunted. He dedicated many hours to the cause. He was indeed an agent, agent of peace. While it is difficult to see beyond the sorrow, we are comforted by the reminder that our colleague fulfilled his purpose by promoting justice and peace. The St. Elizabeth J.P. Association salutes the servant of the people who was indeed a mountain of a man. His life was a blessing and his memory a treasure. Rest in peace, J.P. Neville, signed by Honorable Beryl Chester, C.U.D. J.P. Foster's Word Awards for the Parish of St. Elizabeth. Minister, other members of the clergy, representatives of the customs, MP Slowly, the Green family, the Tuanians and the Tuanians family president, it will be a pleasure of mine, although it is in this school, to speak on behalf of a friend and colleague, Neville Finley. This tribute that I pay this morning is in many areas because we are friends before we were Kiwanians, but because I speak on the half of the Kuan I will take the journey to the point where we became Kuanian. I met level at the Kuanian level in 2001. Immediately after joining the club, a year after that, never became president, and I became his fundraising chairman. We carried that journey straight through because I succeeded him as president in 2004. We had a bond in the club that took us many, many places. And never in particular was a part of the engine of the club, especially in the area of fundraising. All the projects that the Kiwanis Club would undertake, we would be depending on never to be joining forces 
the other to make sure whatever the project costs, we are going to find the money to take care of it. Our journey started overseas in 2002 with a foundation member of the club present here this morning. And I speak of no other than Pastor Tem Governor Vivian Camp. We started in Ottawa and after that we moved right to Canada Health. Every year we would go to a different convention outside of Jamaica. Neville and I will be traveling together. We took a journey that many of you in, in Canada ended because we, we, we took on a driving journey from Toronto to Cape Britain, Nova Scotia, 23 and a half hours of life to go to a convention in Cape Britain. But his work to the Kiwanis Club in Santa Cruz is unprecedented. He became president, as I say, in 2002, three, and in that year, his exemplary work in the Kiwanis Club made him distinguished, and that is for distinguished service. So he is calling the movement Distinguished President Never. I took on the journey in 2003 4 and as I say, we went on as friends until the last convention that Never and I attended was in New Brunswick in 2010. 2019, I became Lieutenant Governor of the movement and we went to Tri Rivers at the convention and then to Nova Scotia 2010 at another convention. And between that time, we were inseparable. I want to say that his work in the movement is recognized in the division, which is Division 25, in Eastern Canada and the Caribbean, which is our district, and in Tuan is international. I want to say that young Tuanians come in to let them the work that is done in this chapter, thank you, by the video. We want to say today that we are not mourning as Tuanians. We are rejoicing, but happy for the legacy that they have left for us all. If we agree to follow in those footsteps and those principles, the Tuanis Club, locally and internationally, will be better for it. In closing, I take a quote from William Shakespeare, from his day as you like. Say, all the world on stage, men and women are merely players. We have our exits and our entrances, and each one man in his time plays many parts without being similar. Never have played his part on the stage. We have now shifted and left the stage. We are left behind to continue to run the race that is left for us. On behalf of the Lieutenant Governor, Division 25, Governor, the District, the Eastern Canada and the Caribbean, President of the World International, I want to say to the family, your dear father, husband, uncle was recognized at the highest level in the Kiwanis movement. May his soul rest in peace and life perpetually shine upon him. Thank you.
God is good. And all the time. Indeed. Just want to take time out to greet again our receiving ministers. The name we called before. Also, um, the beautiful lady sitting here for our pastors this morning. This is why the world is club of Santa Cruz. The third shooters team that are here. The members of the family, other well wishes, other bad persons. I am so happy that beside all my name there is in you know, a small man, a friend. Because in fact I am a friend of the family. I know the family quite well, especially Tommy Winston, we're tomorrow together. And um the Abbey. And girl. So I, I am a friend of the family. And if I were to stand here and uh, try to condense what I have to say this morning with regards to Mr. Finley, I call him Mr. Finley. I have great respect. And you know, his friends are so far as he never. I'm his friend also. But from when I was a little boy, you know, um, he inspired me in so many ways. And if I were to condense, and put it into three words. And, it, and I said, if I were to, because I would be Travis self justice if I should do that to me. And the three words would be real big man. That's how I have seen this feeling over the years. A real big man. Big man in the community. A big man for his family. It's too tall in my eyes. You see, I grew up in the beautiful community of Seven Corners, and Mr. Finley also resided there. And as a child, growing up in very difficult, challenging situations at times, he impacted me in a very positive way. I saw him as being successful and living in the community. I'm still chasing success, but he really impacted me. And I believe strongly that I could be successful and live in the same community. I still try to do that. I know that he has made great impact in terms of being in the Come On This Club. And he has touched many lives. But I want to speak of my life. In the fact that he has touched my life in a very awesome way. And when I said real big man, I, as a child I saw him as a big man. And he is 20 plus years my senior. And I remember even in business, he used encouragement. And I really appreciated those times. And even leading up to my election in 2020, he never showed his hand as to, you know, his political preference, in my opinion. But when we conversed one on one, I found out his political preference. And we not only convert, he supported me. Not only kind, but in cash and real. And so I see him as that person who has really made a huge difference in my life from I was a little child until now. And that is why I refer to him now as a real big man. Winston, your dad has left a great legacy. And I know that the life that your father lived, Abby, that you are now, your lives, worshipped 
and is still being shaped by his life. And you might wonder why I speak about this thing in such a way. You see, I grew up with my grandmother from when I was three months old. Everybody in the community knew that. I never had a father figure. But I would stealthily steal some pages from some people. You know, that was one of them. And so we need more persons like that in our community who will shape our communities because strong communities be a strong country. And our community has lost a very strong man, a really big man. The family has lost a strong man, a real big man. Jamaica has lost a strong man, a real big man. He is in fact a real brain. And I dare say that I'm still trying to take pages out of Mr. Finley's life. As a man myself, would want to be considered someday a real big man myself. I pray that the light of Christ will continue to shine upon my friend and that he will continue to rest in the loving arms of our Lord and our Savior. May his soul rest in peace. Thank you for these few minutes. God bless you all. Good morning, everyone. Taking protocols as previously. 
be established. And then someone brings me a video. I stand here today and I know many people don't know who I am as I'm not on the program. I am Vanessa Lawrence Williams representing myself and Barita, um, who Mr. Finley had become a part of. Mr. Finley was much more than a cherry. Sorry. Mr. Finley was much more than a cherished client and friend. He became family. Our initial connection, born of financial matters, blossomed into a firm friendship that spanned over two decades. His passing has left a void within the Ritalanda family, particular in my own heart. Never was among the clientele the eagerly anticipated scene. His arrival would be marked by his winning smile and warm greetings always delivered in a gentle, soft-spoken voice. Never once did we hear him raise his voice in frustration or anger. Upon entering my office, we would engage in lengthy conversations, sharing our life experiences and offering guidance on the matters we held expertise in. We were mutually enriched through our exchange and never faced a level of trust in me that elevated my sense of responsibilities. I felt compelled never to disappoint him. There were occasions when investments did not unfold as planned, and I feared I had let him down. Yet, he would simply smile, seek an explanation, and I had to give one, and reassure me that things would eventually work out. In times of tranquility and joy, what do we learn the most? Friendship. When our hearts brim with gratitude, what do we require? A friend. When distress shadows us and misery walks alongside us, where do we turn? To friends. Friends to share. Friends to listen. Neville's friendship was a beacon of light and a wisdom that illuminated our lives, and it will continue to do so in our memories and hearts. Family and friends, there will be no more night, no more pain, no more tears. Rest in peace, Neville, from the meter.
1947. I died July 21st, 2023. His parents were Harold and Elfrida Finley, affectionately known as Mars Harry and his Frida. Both are now deceased. He was the youngest of six children. Never died. He survived by his wife Andrea, his brother George in Canada, who could not be here, and his sister Sylvia in New York, who also could not be here. His five children, children rather, contrary to what the program you guys are reading, it's myself, Winston, Carrie Ann, Laura, and Abigail. Ten grandchildren and one on the way. <laughs> um, so, we're going to go in order of the grandchildren. Cynthia, Crystal, Lauren, Tiffany, Malik, TJ, which is my son, Tamela Julian, Jordan, Cameron, Skylar, Adam, and little Maria, who is on our way, like I said. You know, about to grace us with our entrance next month. <laughs> His nieces and nephews, two daughters, I mean, two daughter-in-laws, two son-in-laws, and a plethora of cousins. I'll tell you something, my father wore, wore a lot of hats. I'm changing things up, I'm in a different zone. So my father wore a lot of hats, other than being a husband, and a father, a brother, an uncle, a boss, etc. He was also a businessman, a justice of peace, a member of the Timonis, a member of the Road Tree, but uh, you don't know that, a member of the Lodge, and of course, a member of the Bird Shooting Fraternity. <laughs> Never attended his primary, then sent out the technical, but he excelled. I learned to be a machinist. After high school, he was employed at Albert for many years and became a supervisor of the machine shop there. He later migrated to New York after Albert, when Albert closed, where he worked at Eagle Electrics and New York Transit. My own man here to the poor one. So after a few years, Alpha reopened and uh, he was offered his old position back with many other incentives, especially from Mrs. Nemad and Paddy Sinclair. <laughs> he returned to Jamaica. His aspirations was always to be his own boss. And my father loved him, he did not like the point. So hence, Weltek was born. As with any business, Success was the ultimate goal and well tech. For those who don't know, it became very successful. Now, as the first born son, two sons of Winston and me, we didn't always see eye to eye on many things. I could be stubborn, so them say. Sarcastic, so them say, naturally. And too clever for my own good. This is all understandable because I learned from the best. Fun fact, my fascination with speed, who know how I drive? Anyway, was due to my own mother, who was also fascinated with speed, so I learned that from an early age, trying to be like the mother, you see? Over time, we moved closer, <clears throat> and I came, to, the, to realize how much my father and I have in common and how much of him is in, in me. It turned out that I inherited quite a bit of his logical and creative dichotomy. Never feeling 
They have never been interviewed by the cleaner, the observer, or any other Jamaican media platforms. But let me tell you something. That's a great one here. That's a shell. He's right here with us. So, in closing, I'll say this. There are two types of pain in this world. One that hurts you, and the other that changes you. That is, since your passing, I've been experiencing both. You're no longer here physically, but you will always be my heart. Because in there, you're still alive. What the bread? Thank you.
dari The world needs more fathers like you to believe in their daughters like you, like the one you were to be. Thank you, Daddy, for always believing in me, for always letting me know absolutely nothing was out of my reach. In the end, there is no goodbye on the law.
nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. If we live, we live to the Lord. And if we die, we die to the Lord. So then, whether we live or whether we die, we are the Lord. For to this end, Christ died and lived again, that he might be Lord both of the dead and of the living. We brought nothing into the world, and we take nothing out. The Lord gives, and the Lord takes away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. The eternal God is our refuge. And underneath are the everlasting arms.
a reading from the Word of God, written in the Gospel of John, chapter 11, beginning at the 21st verse. Now Martha said to Jesus, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. But even now, I know that whatsoever you ask of God, God will give you. Jesus said to her, your brother will rise again. Martha said to him, I know that he will rise again in the resurrection at the last day. Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me, Though he may die, he shall live. And whoever lives and believes in me shall never die. Do you believe this? She said to him, Yes, Lord. I believe that you are Christ, the Son of God, and you have come into the world. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
let me welcome you here, especially those who did not hear the first welcome. And let me acknowledge the presence of the Kiwanis Club, Honorable Deroy Slowly, the JPs, the bird shooters, and uh, I'd like to tell them that I love bird. <laughs> <laughs> we have come to honor the real big man, the legend. And so let me offer on behalf of the combinations of the Gillard Santa Cruz Pure condolences to the family of Neville Daisy Finley. Please be assured of our prayers at this time. I know that you are not the only persons who will miss you. I would like to share with you today from the first letter of Peter chapter 3, verses 4 to 6 and verse 8, which says, Through God's great mercy, we have been reborn into a living hope that will never fail or fail. We have everything to live for, and the future starts today. Through faith, God's power is standing watch, protecting you for a salvation that you will see completely at the end of things. You should greatly rejoice in what is waiting for you, even if you now, for a little while, have to suffer various trials. Although you haven't seen Jesus, you still love him. Although you don't yet see him, you do believe in him and celebrate with joy. That is glorious and beyond words. Let us pray. Creator God, all hope is built on nothing less than Jesus Christ. All righteousness. We dare not trust in or lean against any other frame except that which is the name of Jesus. Enable us, Lord, to be refreshed as we live here, choosing to stand on the solid rock of Christ as we click the restart button. And I proclaim your word in the name of God, the creator whose image we all bear, the redeemer, constant reconciler, and the Holy Spirit who journeys through life with us. Amen. Death is hard and painful. It's never easy to lose those we love. And it is not a situation in which we can say we are happy. Sometimes it's bittersweet. Other times, it's just as if you have been hit by a two before. And even weeks later, you still feel the blow as if it just happened. Nobody understands that better than us who have not.
lost loved ones. But Peter leaves this parting word for us. Peter, in writing the passage I just read, was encouraging his Christian community to live life without him. To continue as before, despite the pain of losing him. And he tells them, through God's great mercy, we have been reborn into a living hope that will never fade or fail. We have everything to live for, and the future starts today. God's power is standing watch, protecting us. And Peter is not saying that we should be happy about death, but we should find it within ourselves to look for the hope of humans. Peter doesn't say look with you. He says, look for him. And Peter calls it the living hope. That is, it's a hope that is alive and breathes with each new breath that we take. Lamentations chapter 3 says something similar. New every morning is God's mercy. And Peter says, with each breath we take, we are starting more. And we can start over with confidence because Peter says, if we believe in God, we should also believe that God is standing watch, protecting us, and ensuring that we will see in time the plan God has for us. We just have to trust God. In another verse, Peter says, the hope is kept in heaven for us. And I understand that to mean that it is something we have no control over. Thus, it doesn't fluctuate with our moods. It never dies. It cannot be spoiled. It doesn't go awry. It doesn't fail even when we doubt that it exists. You see, it is the same as when we say we hope the rain is going to fall. Hoping the rain will fall is wishful thinking. It is not vague or uncertain. It is what we believe and it is what we hold on to. It is as sure as we know that the sun will rise tomorrow, come what may. That hope says that we shall see never again when we too go home to glory land. We will see all whom we have lost. We just need to hold on to Jesus and bear each other up. When we think of death, many of us find it hard to believe that there is an afterlife. We are skeptics because no one has ever come back and told us about it. My cousin died a few, well, about two weeks ago, and somebody dreamt her, and they said she was as if she was living, and the person said, since you gone, no one stay, what happened over there? And she said to the person, you need the money. tells us that death is not the end of life. 
And various passages in the Bible describe it differently. A new heaven and a new earth, a heavenly banquet, a place of rest, a place where we all bow down, holy, 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 holy. And we do that day in, day out, unceasingly. A place where no sorrow or torment can touch us. As Christians, we believe that life does not end with death. So never is good. Don't worry about him. And we pray that God has accepted him and that his name is written in the Lamb's book of life. But what about us? How are we to continue without never? Was a good churchman, you know, a very good member of this congregation. So we went missing. He was a good family member. Family went missing. He's described as a legend, a real big man. The JCs, the bird shooters, the Kiwanis Club. Everybody going to miss him. What about us who are left here to mourn? We who are still alive, where is the comfort for us? How are we expected to continue? Who is now going to fill Neville's shoes? And when we think about that, nobody can. And I know that makes us sad and ready to cry again. But Peter says there is a way to live without his physical presence. And there are two ways in fact. We are created in God's image. We are God's children. Allowing us to live that eternal life that never, by virtue of his faith, is now experiencing in a different space. As spiritual beings, because you all know we have different selves, right? We have the physical self, we have the emotional self, and we have the spiritual self. Usually we don't tend to our spiritual selves. But as spiritual beings, we live and breathe this living hope every day until the day we see God and our loved ones face to face. Never believe in the hope that Jesus and Peter tells us about. That one day we will go to this place of joy. He that is never gave his life to Christ and lived as a Christian as best he knew how. And that is all that is expected of us to live our lives as we best know how. So we are not alone because God, the passage tells us, God will protect us. And he can protect us if we stand in front. It says, through faith, God's power is standing watch, protecting you for a salvation that you will see completely at the end of things. God never leaves us. God is always near. We just need to trust that God's power is standing watch over us. The second way in which we are expected to live for hope is by living a full life even though 
never let those we love are not here with us now. And this hope is not a hit or miss thing. It's sure and certain. Trust God. God cares for you. God is eternal. God cared for you before. God is caring for you now. And God will continue to care. Peter says, be truly glad. There is wonderful joy ahead, even though you must endure many trials for a little while. Peter is not suggesting that we gloat in the fact that somebody has died, or that we should forget them. Peter is saying, despite the fact that never is no longer with us, we must continue to live as full a life as we are best able. Leaning on God and the way Jesus taught us, that will get us see. And life isn't easy. It wasn't easy when never was alive. But the fun times made up for the bad times. And so it is to be now. The good times will outweigh the bad. And I speak to you from personal experience, from a place where the loss of a loved one is still fresh. I'm not doing it out of advice to hoping that it will comfort you. I am speaking as someone who has experienced the death of loved ones five times over. Father, mother, brother, son, sister. And the only way to live through these times is to look to the joy of the newness that greets you, remembering that they walk with you. Cry as you will, any and everywhere, but live and breathe. I did not mind or mentally disturb if you speak to Neville when you want to tell him things because there are things that you would only discuss with him. My father died many, many moons ago. I can tell you the day. I don't remember the year. Somehow, 1980 or something like that. It seemed. But I remember him every time I joined an ATM line because I never joined a line while my father was alive. He did all my mistakes. And so, it is natural, natural for you to speak to Neville and speak about Neville. Your brain is wired that way. And you have been doing it for as long as you know him. You aren't going to stop now. There are things that will remind you of him every day. But the pain will subside. Trust me. Hold on to the memories and hold on to Jesus. He will carry you through. We sing a Catholic hymn today, and I should say Roman Catholic, because as Anglicans, Catholic doesn't mean Roman Catholic to us. It means universal. And when we do the Apostles' Creed, we will say that one Catholic Church. So we sing our Roman Catholic hymn today, and as we sing it, I would like for us not to just read the words, but to pray them. 
Because it's God speaking to us through this loss and many other losses that we may have. Even those that we have stored and are bitter about. God is our hope. God is our refuge. And underneath us are God's everlasting arms. God says in the hymn that God will always be with us. Whether we are in a barren place, whether we are thirsty, whether we are in an unsafe place, God is with us. And that's the hope that never had. That he believed and it can be ours too. So the hymn says, do not be afraid because God walks with us. All we are asked to do is follow in God's ways. Live and breathe. Embracing the newness that life brings our way. In sure and certain hope of life, know that God is with you through it all. The psalm says, God goes before us. And that we shall see the face of God and live. Let us then, friends, just hold on to that. And God will do the rest. Amen. Let us stand. And let us with confidence and hope confess the faith into which we were baptized. As we say, the Apostles' Creed. And I'd like to remind us that the Apostles' Creed is what all Christians believe. Because it says, that we believe in God the Almighty, that we believe in Jesus Christ and that he died on a cross and that he rose from the dead and that he sits on the right hand ready to judge the quick and the dead. It says that we believe in the Holy Spirit the holy universal church is one church Jesus from. That there's a communion of saints, those who have died and we who live now. And we all believe in the forgiveness of sins. And that one day we will rise again. And that life continues, it is everlasting. So please join me. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under the Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the on the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen.
I am resurrection and I am life. Lord, you consoled Martha and Mary in their distress. Draw near to us who mourn for never and dry the tears of those who weep. You wept at the grave of Lazarus, your friend. Comfort us in our sorrow. You raised the dead to life. Give to our brother eternal life. You promised paradise to the thief who repented. Bring our brother to the joys of heaven. Our brother was back, washed in baptism and anointed with the Holy Spirit. Give him fellowship with all your saints. He was nourished with your body and blood. Grant him a place at the table in your heavenly kingdom. Console Neville's family and friends in their grief. Surround them with your love and strengthen them with the grace and the peace of your love. Yes. Comfort us in our sorrows at the death of our brother. Let our faith be our consolation and eternal life our hope. Yes. Father of all, we pray to you for never and for all those whom we love but see no longer. Grant to them eternal let thy perpetual shine upon them. May he and all the faithful party, through the mercy of God, rest in peace. Amen. The hymn for the collection.
been so fair. I stood in old Jerusalem beside the temple fair. I heard the children singing, and ever as they sang, methought the voice of angels from heaven answered.
be the rest. Oh God, dear servant, never with our saints. The sorrow and pain are no more, and that is sign of the life everlasting. You only are mortal, the creator and maker of humankind, and we are mortal. Home of the earth, and to earth it shall be returned. For so did you ordain when you created me, say, You are dust, and to dust you shall return. All of us go down to the dust. Let us not the grave we make our song. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. We rest so Christ, dear servant, and we give your sins, your sorrow and pain are no more. Not a sign, but life everlasting. Let us commend, O oh God, and never to the mercy of God, our oh Maker and Redeemer. Deliver us our own memory, O Sovereign Lord Christ, from all evil. Set him free from every bond, that he may rest with all your saints in the eternal habitation, where the Father and the Holy Spirit will live and reign, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Because you are
But we first go and delay never to rest, and then we journey back to the hall for that.
is the grave site. Yeah.
right? Yeah. Right here. Right here. Right here. Right here. Right here.
My body also shall blossoms and then rivers. Like a shadow he sees and never stays. Don't go. Come in. Come in. I want you to do to, to the ashes and ashes. When you say, when you say, when you say, okay? No, no, when you say. In the midst of life, we are in death. To whom can we turn to for help? But to you, Lord, who are justly angered by our sins. Lord God, holy and mighty, holy and immortal, holy and most merciful Savior, deliver us from the bitter pains of eternal death. You know the secrets of our hearts. In your mercy, hear our prayer. Forgive us our sins, and at our last hour, let us not fall away from you. In sure and certain hope of resurrection to eternal life, through our Lord Jesus Christ, we commend to Almighty God, our brother, and we commit his body to the ground. Earth to earth. 
ashes to ashes, dust to dust. And we beseech you in your infinite goodness to give us grace to live in your dear love and to die in your favor that when your well-beloved son shall come again in judgment both this our brother Neville and we ourselves may be found acceptable in your sight grant this for the sake of your son Jesus Christ our Lord Amen the Lord be with you Almighty God, with whom still live the spirit of those who die in the Lord, and with whom the souls of the faithful are in joy and felicity, we give you heartfelt thanks for the good examples of all your servants who have finished their course in faith, now find rest and refreshment. May we, with all who have died in the true faith of your holy name, have perfect fulfillment and bliss in your eternal and everlasting glory. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Grant, O oh Lord, to all those who are bereaved. I remember here, Tommy Winston, Laura, Perry, Abigail, Andrea. Grant to them the spirit of faith and courage that they may have strength to meet the days to come with steadfastness and patience, not soaring as those without hope, but in thankful remembrance of your goodness and in the joyful expectation of eternal life with those they love. And this we ask in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Rest, grant, to him, O oh Lord, and let light perpetual shine upon you. May he and all the faithful departed through the mercy of God rest in peace. Amen. We turn to our programs as we continue to sing songs of praise and thanksgiving. We turn to the hymn on our programs at the graveside. When the trumpet of the Lord shall sound, and time shall be no more. When the trumpet of the Lord shall sound, and then shall be no more. And the morning makes it turn on right again. When the table of the shall gather, Yeah, I said, 
Oui, à nouveau, madame. Nous, nous,
fly away. And I die. Hallelujah, by and by. Fly away. That is Mary, is it? Mary is Yes, I See there. Okay. Oh, the black one. Yes. Okay. See there. See there. Hey, and I am black one. Come and I don't know if you miss me, don't come searching. I And if you don't find me. Je suppose que c'est un grand Je suis un grand Je suis un grand Je suis un grand Je suis un 
नतीजे में बस यही मतलब है। कोई भी रिश्ता हो। नतीजे में बस यार जन्म दे।